two Dutch students disappeared while hiking in Panama in early 2014. Some remains were recovered in the months following, however how they died could not be determined, and there is much speculation as to what happened to them. Tonight, on Dark Curiosities, the mysterious deaths of Lisanna Frohn and Chris Kramers. Lisanna Frohn was born on September 24th, 1991 in Amersfoort in the Netherlands to Peter and Dainé Frohn. She was known for being an athletic and intelligent individual. Lisanna had just graduated from studying applied sciences in Deventer. Lisanna then moved in with her friend, Chris Kramers, both of whom worked at the same cafe restaurant. Chris was born on August 9th, 1992 to Hans and Roly, also in Amersfoort. Chris had also completed her studies in cultural social education, primarily art education at Utrecht University. In the spring of 2014, the Dutch women had arranged a trip to Panama to celebrate Lisanna's recent graduation, as well as help out the locals and learn some Spanish. They had been saving up for six months and had planned on staying for six weeks. The pair departed from Amsterdam and arrived in Panama on March 15th. For two weeks, they toured Panama before they arrived in Boquette on the 29th. They were to begin a one-month stint of volunteer work with children and were accommodated by a host family. 1st of April 2014. At 11am, the young woman went on a hike around the clouded forests surrounding the Baru volcano, which lay fairly close to the Pianista Trail, not far from Boquette. They did not travel alone as their host family's dog, Blue, accompanied them. They had posted on social media that they had intended to walk around Boquette and they had reportedly had brunch with two other Dutchmen before beginning the trail. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary until Blue returned home that night to the host family without Chris and Lisanna. Lisanna's parents became concerned when they stopped receiving messages from her on WhatsApp, which she used regularly to keep in contact with her family back in the Netherlands. It wasn't until the next day when the police were informed by a tour guide, Policiano, who had arranged to meet the girls in the morning, and they had not turned up. The police visited the home of the host family, and, upon initial investigations, it seemed that Lisanna and Chris had not returned from their hike. On April 3rd, the searching began. Aerial searches were conducted and local farmers and tribes aided in seeking the young women. On April 6th, the girls' parents flew into Panama alongside Dutch police, including special forces with dog units and detectives. They searched the forest for 10 days but turned up no clues as to the whereabouts of Chris and Lisanna. A $30,000 reward was put in place by their parents, desperate to find their lost daughters. Ten weeks later, a backpack was handed in to police, found by a Nagobi woman near a riverbank in Alto Romero, in the region of Bocas del Toro, which lay 12 hours by foot from the Continental Divide. The woman had stated she had not been sure if the backpack had been there before. The backpack was identified as having belonged to Lisana Frohn. The contents of the backpack were said to have been dry and in good condition. The items included $83 in cash, two pairs of sunglasses, two bras, Lisanna's passport, a water bottle, Lisanna's Canon PowerShot SX270 camera, Lisanna's Samsung Galaxy S3 and Chris's iPhone 4. The phones and camera provided a huge turning point in the investigation. Data was retrieved on the phones of Chris and Lisanna, and it was discovered on the phone logs that the girls had tried to contact the police numerous times. At 4.39pm, mere hours after beginning their hike, Chris's phone had made the first distress call, followed by Lisanna making a call at 4.51pm. Reception was practically non-existent. However, on April 3rd, another call was made. However, it was cut off after one second when signal was lost. On April 5th, Lisanna's phone battery became exhausted and was never used again. Chris's phone was switched on several times following, searching for a phone signal. However, it never attempted any more calls. On April 6th, multiple incorrect PIN codes were entered into Chris's iPhone and never received the correct code again. 
One report says that over the duration of three days between the 7th and 10th of April, 77 emergency call attempts were made on the iPhone. On 11th of April, the iPhone was switched on at 10.51am and just over an hour later turned off for the final time. Lizana's Canon camera also provided investigators with some evidence showing that the pair had taken the trail at the Continental Divide and accidentally wandered into the wilderness and having found themselves lost made the first emergency call. It is important to note that at this point there was no signs of anything unusual. On 8th of April, a week after being declared missing, 90 flash photographs were taken on her camera between 1am and 4am, which equates on average one photograph snapped every two minutes. Of the 90 pictures, most were completely dark. Some speculate that the reason for so many dark photos is because that night, a search party apparently wandered through the tropical woodland in search of the girls, and they noticed them and desperately tried to signal for help, but to no avail. There were a couple photographs, however, that showed Lisanna and Chris were near a river or ravine. Some show a twig with a plastic bag and candy wrappers on top of a rock, another toilet tissue and a mirror on another rock. Perhaps more worryingly, a photograph showing what appears to be Chris with blood on her temple. Another search was conducted along the Culera after the backpack was found. Zipped and neatly folded on a rock were Chris Kramer's shorts, found by two more Nagobi women. Two months later, a gruesome discovery was made. Close to where the backpack was discovered was a discarded boot with a foot inside of it, and a pelvic bone was found nearby, behind a tree. Dutch authorities identified that the remains belonged to Lisanna Frohn and Chris Kramers. Along the Culera riverbank, more than 33 bones were found, 28 of which were from Lisanna's foot. Lizana's bones reportedly still had skin attached, whereas the pelvic bone belonging to Chris had been bleached. Police believe that the young woman deviated from the trail and one of them became injured. Whilst the other tried to help, they too injured themselves, eventually leading to a slow death from dehydration and starvation in the wilderness of Panama. Theories about this case range from the pair succumbing to the elements to a sinister murder case and incidents of foul play, but what really happened to Lisanna and Chris? Many aspects of this case are intriguing and terrifying in equal measure. Two promising young women set out on an adventure of a lifetime, never to return to their loved ones. Although we may never know what happened to the Dutch women, two families' lives were changed forever.